Welcome aboard, cruisers. It's Traveling Karina, and I'm excited to give you a tour of the brand new Carnival Jubilee cruise ship. Join me as we explore the public spaces of this XL class ship. I will also share my insights, some of the food and entertainment options, a couple of the exclusive areas, and clips from my own experiences. We had the pleasure of cruising aboard the Carnival Jubilee during its inaugural season, enjoying back-to-back -back sailings from January 20th to February 3rd, 2024. We are currently on deck six at the front of the ship, and that is where I will be starting the tour and making our way up. Because we were on back-to-back -back sailings, I seized the unique opportunity to capture footage of the ship between cruises, so you will see a lot of the spaces with minimal people providing a rare perspective. I will also be throwing in moments from my own experiences. Also on deck six at the front of the ship is the Jubilee Theater and the Cloud Nine Spa and Fitness Center. Unfortunately, I was unable to capture the spa area, but I will be showing you the Jubilee Theater later on deck seven. All right, so we are now entering Grand Central, the impressive three level open concept atrium that hosts a variety of food options, shops, and bars, all surrounding a large screen and center stage. This is one of the places that they put on shows and entertainment. When I first saw this space on the celebration last year, I wasn't a big fan of it being used for shows because of viewing and sightline issues, and I still thought that for this ship, but it is absolutely stunning, and if you don't mind waiting 30 minutes to an hour for a show, you can get really good seats. Side note, if you veer off to the left here, you will come across the original Jubilee ship bell on display. It brought back fond memories for me as my first cruise was on the original Jubilee in the late 80s. Definitely worth the visit for that nostalgic touch. Please share your favorite moments aboard the original Jubilee in the comments below. All right, back to the stage. To get good seats for a show, one of the things we did was wait till the first show ended and grab seats as people left. We would then have to wait a bit for the second show, but we were right up front and saw everything. And another side note, we adored Kendall Fire, the cruise director. Her energy, quick wit, and vibrant personality added an extra layer of excitement to every activity and show she hosted. I'll be back with occasional insights, but for now, enjoy this beautiful ship. There are two main complimentary dining rooms on this ship, one for assigned seating and one for your time open seating. We are currently at the Atlantic Restaurant, which is the dining room for guests that choose assigned seating. We chose the 6 p.m. early option, but quick note, on the XL class ships, early dining has changed to 5.30 p.m. on regular evenings and 5 p.m. on formal nights. We enjoy assigned seating as it ensures the same table and servers each night. It also serves as our regular meeting place for all family members and friends to connect. We also enjoy the entertaining staff performances that they put on for us most evenings. Yeah. Continuing on deck six, you'll discover Dr. Inks Bar, cleverly named for its play on Drinks Bar. This instantly became a favorite spot of mine for socializing, entertainment, and of course, drinks. Not ready yet? Yep. No touchy, touchy. No touchy, touchy. Do you need to go make a wish? 
and you'll have to pop it. A fun feature of this section is that during specific times, you have the option to select both the song and overall vibe of the current area. Check it out. Okay, Carlos, coming up. Traveling Karina has selected the next song. Wow. Another exciting feature to explore in the current section of the ship is on deck 7, where you can customize the video being played on the screens above Dr. Inks and Emeralds during specific times. Oh, what's this? Oh, change the current. Yep. It's going to change.
Jubilee Theater is a venue for informative talks, special events, and nightly shows. Our must-see is the Love and Marriage Show, but we also enjoy Celestial Strings and Family Feud. We are now on deck eight, the third level dedicated to entertainment, shops, and dining. Chaibang, the Chinese and Mexican restaurant, has noodle and burrito bowls available for lunch and a larger menu available for dinner. Currently, both lunch and dinner are complimentary, but once inaugural season concludes, I was informed that dinner will only be free for your initial visit. We gave this spot a try last year on the celebration, but we didn't end up staying, mainly because I had a headache and it was very crowded and loud just bad timing. But I'm really glad we gave it another chance on the Jubilee because it ended up being a highlight of our vacation. Cucina del Capitano, another specialty restaurant, is open for dinner and offers unlimited visits during the inaugural season. Post-inaugural season, I believe only the first visit will be complimentary. Although our dining experience was enjoyable, it ranked as our least favorite. The entertainment included a staff member singing a Tina Turner classic. Can you guess which one by the dance? Leave a comment below. Rudy's Sea Grill exceeded our expectations and became our favorite dining spot. Highlights include the lobster mac and cheese, lobster tail, seared shrimp, and the best key lime pie I have ever had. So good. 
Chef Tahir and his team provided exceptional service, making this our favorite specialty restaurant. Keep in mind, there is a fee for this indulgence and unforgettable dining experience. Guy's Pig & Anchor Smokehouse Brew House offers many dining options. There is a complimentary late night buffet, which is perfect for a pre-bedtime snack. On sea days, you can indulge in a buffet style lunch that is located on the outside deck. This is my personal fave and is available at no extra cost. And there is a specialty sit down dinner with a menu resembling the lunch buffet, but it is served to you. This was available for free, but again, I think it's just for the first visit. Additionally, there are enticing special menu items available for order, albeit with an associated fee. we've reached deck 16, the Lido deck. I skipped decks 9 to 15 because they are occupied by staterooms. At the ship's rear, you'll find Big Chicken, which is a personal fave of mine, Tide's Pool and Bar, and the Lido Marketplace. The Marketplace has a variety of complimentary dining options, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffets, a gelato station, and convenient grab-and-go choices.
Would you like to know what he's carving? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Carnival Jubilee, he's carving a block of ice. Let's go. This is where many outdoor activities unfold, from lively sail away parties, ice carvings, line dance instructions, and movie nights. Lots to enjoy. The ship is truly stunning. I really enjoyed the layout and never felt overcrowded. There were quite a variety of activities ensuring that we could always find something enjoyable. There were ample sun chairs available ensuring we always found a spot to relax in the sun. We just loved our culinary experiences at Rudy's Sea Grill and Shebang which added to the overall enjoyment and despite some issues with the Grand Central screens, the shows we did catch were very entertaining. My only minor concern pertains to the elevators which occasionally get crowded and have long wait times particularly the midship ones. In our second week, we were closer to the front of the ship and that improved our elevator experience. However, I must admit, I do miss the efficiency of the smart elevators on the panorama. If you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing to my channel. I share my experiences to give you, the viewer, a preview of what to expect on your upcoming vacation. Your support contributes to the channel's growth, enabling me to create more content. Thank you in advance for your support. Happy cruising.